morning enjoying this beautiful day today and thought I would walk my dog again because he loves it so and I was thinking about something I was reading this morning from 1st Peter at the end of the New Testament the second chapter in the ninth verse where he says you are a chosen race a royal priesthood a holy nation God's own people that you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who brought you out of darkness into his marvelous light. A wonderful thought, and there's just so much there which describes the Christian as one who has been chosen by God before the foundation of the earth. That's you if you have believed in Jesus Christ. He has chosen you before you were conceived. He set forth a plan to redeem you and to bring you to himself through his son Jesus on the cross. And I was concentrating especially on that thought of us being part of a royal priesthood. One of the great truths of Reformation teaching, it returned us to the biblical understanding of the priesthood, which is that we are all priests before God in Jesus Christ. The universality of the priesthood. Every believer is a priest before God, the priesthood of believers. I don't any longer need someone to stand between me and God to address my spiritual concerns, or better said, to handle my sins. The Old Testament priests were especially called by God to act as mediators. A mediator is, crudely put, a go-between, someone who would stand between the sinner and the holy God of this universe. And the priest would offer sacrifices to address the sins of the person. Jesus came as the one final priest, the high priest as he's described in Hebrews 4 and in many other places in the book of Hebrews. He is the one high priest, the final priest who's sympathetic with all of our concerns and Amazingly, rather than offering a particular animal sacrifice or some other kind of sacrifice, he offered himself. He was the final sacrifice for sins. You remember what he said on the cross there? It is finished. And therefore, the earthly priesthood is now considered null and void. It's completely unnecessary. It's obsolete. I don't have to, again, go to a man to have him hear my sins and give me recommendations as to what to do in handling those sins. My sins can be directly confessed to the Father. And when they are, with sincerity of heart, they are forgiven. Now we do have pastors, we do have leaders. The book of Hebrews also talks about that. Peter himself referred to himself as an elder, a fellow elder. There are elders and there are the saints. There is a minimal structure, if you will, in the church of the living God, but the priesthood is gone. And we can have tried to appeal to ancient history, medieval history, modern history, and try to argue based upon the judgments of men. But when we take a serious hard look at what the Bible actually says, we realize all of that is done and over with. Thank God.
I rejoice in that fact. And I am a priest. Every believer is a priest, a representative of God before his family and before others. That does not say that we're perfect in any way, shape, or form, but we are now his ambassadors, his representatives. And we can go directly into the Holy of Holies. The Bible says we have a sure and steadfast anchor of our souls, a hope that enters into the inner place behind the curtain. That's Hebrews 6:19. We can go directly to God ourselves. And this is such a liberating thought. I'm thankful for God's calling, God's saving, and I hope you know him through his son, and you too again, if you know Jesus, are a priest, you've been called, you're part of the royal priesthood, you are to be holy along with the rest of those who call the name of Jesus, and you belong to him. Praise his name. Have a good day today. May those thoughts lift your spirits if they need lifting. Take care.